Well, hello. I am here with Emily Frazier, who is the filmmaker for the movie Ghost Town that was in Cabin Fever Film Festival. And we're so glad to be able to talk with you. Emily, you've got a whole new fan base here in Percival for your film. Um, so let's just jump right in, if that's okay. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, so um, really, first of all, very interested, lots of people asking about what your inspiration for making this film, if you were connected somehow with the town or kind of how you came to make this movie. So tell us about that. Yeah, so um, it was about 10 years ago now. I worked for a summer at Philmont Scott Ranch, which is a high adventure summer camp in the Sangre de Cristo Mountains in Northern New Mexico. And I was a videographer there and I never spent much time um, out West and I was really just taken by the landscape. I'm originally from Percival and I grew up on the East Coast and um, the landscape of the West was just like really magical for me and the remoteness of it and the expansiveness of it. So. I spent all my time off driving around and exploring and the ghost town of Dawson was nearby. So of course I wanted to go see it. And um, when you drive to Dawson, it's down this little winding gravel road um, in the middle of absolutely nowhere. And it's really surreal coming to a cemetery um, mm -hmm. out there in the middle of nowhere. And I just thought that was such a powerful image. So. It really stuck in my mind and then it wasn't until a few years later that I learned the people who used to live in the town come back every two years for reunions mm -hmm. and at that point they were you know up in their 80s and 90s and passing away and so it just felt like I needed to make a film about it and sort of preserve that before the town completely disappeared with the loss yeah. of that family to live there. Right. It was so remarkable. And and there was so much feeling in that film that you um, you portrayed, you know, the, the feeling, the, the community that came through. I think people really reacted to that. And um, as I said, I had several questions of, you know, what your connection was. So, yeah, you you created some new connections with that community through your film, which was lovely. Yeah, yeah thank you. So um, an interesting process because that was more of a documentary uh, than um, like a live action film where you're really telling a story of, of something that really exists. And um, again, I had several people comment about the the way that you superimposed the the old pictures onto the new landscape. Um, so tell us about kind of your vision and your process for how you made that this film. Yeah. Um, so I think going into it, you never entirely know what you're what you're doing with the documentary because you're responding to the real world and. Um, and the obstacles thrown in your path. And so one of the obstacles I came up against is that the town or where the town used to be is private property. So the cemetery um, is on the register of historic places and the public can go, um, but the town proper is private land and there's a caretaker who is really good at his job of guarding the area and not letting people in. And so I was lucky enough to have an artist residency in northern New Mexico. And I thought, I have a couple months here. That's plenty of time for me to sort of sweet talk my way into the town and <laughs> the gatekeeper. And unfortunately, I wasn't able to. He was just like, nope, nobody gets in. And wow. considered hopping the fence and filming surreptitiously. Um, but if you parked nearby, he would inevitably show up in his truck with his gun mounted in back. And so I oh realized my gosh. I just I can't mess around. Um, I have to work with this limitation. And so um, one of my subjects who used to live in the town spent a lot of time with me looking at maps and, and showing me old archival images of buildings, 
explaining where things were. And every two years when the reunion happens, the public is allowed into the town. And so I, I sort of like in my mind knew where things were. And I just spent a day running from one location to the next matching these photos to the current landscape. And it was really just like a mad dash to get wow. as I could. Wow, that's that's incredible story. I mean, definitely a challenge that's different when you make a documentary versus a scripted uh, film. Yeah. yeah, and I, I did actually look on the website for the Dawson reunion that they skipped 2020 because of COVID, um, but they are planning to have one this fall in 2021. And uh, that gave me a lot of hope yeah, it's such a meaningful, a meaningful event for these people. Like they really do wait, you know, every two years to go back and see their friends, and it's a really big deal. Um, so it was sad that the 2021 had to be canceled. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, it's such a, such a lovely, a lovely thing to do. Have have they had other people make films? I mean, how did they? react to the idea of you being there. They seemed so natural, like not really even noticing the cameras. So I kind of wondered about that. Yeah, um, so the people who I who I interviewed, um, I spent time with them without the camera first, just sort of getting to know them and gaining their trust and listening to their stories. Um, and so by the time I brought the camera in for the interview, I had a really good sense of what they might want to talk about and I was able to tailor my questions and tailor the film, you know, based on what they wanted to bring to the table. And then at the reunion itself, um, for some of them, that was the first time they had seen me with the camera, um, but they were so busy just like reconnecting with each other that they kind of didn't care. You know, we, my husband right. and I filmed that together and we said, you know, just pretend we're not here. And they were really happy to do that because they were so busy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. they, they seem to just be, yeah, absolutely very natural. So that was nice, yeah. And the the one-on-one the -on -one interviews um, were were great too because they um, their personalities just come through. And, and I, I expect that that is difficult to accomplish when you're doing some kind of documentary. I mean, they're they're real people. They're not playing a part. So it's somehow to capture their the essence of that person and the story they have to tell, but in a relaxed way. It's you've got to have some tricks up your sleeve. Maybe I don't know. <laughs> yeah, well, I think it helps that I was um, when I was doing all the interviews. I was just working by myself. I didn't have a crew. Um, really pared down interview setup. I wasn't using um, any extra lighting. I was just working with natural light. So it was just me and my camera. And um, mm -hmm. and because I already had a relationship with them from having right. met them before and spent time, I think it wasn't super intimidating. And so their personalities were right. able to come through. Right. Well, I find you easy to talk to. So I'm sure you put you put everyone at ease. That's great. So you said there were some challenges like the uh, the gatekeeper. Uh, it sounds like it was your biggest challenge, um, and um, I don't I don't know if there were any other, um, you know, things that come to mind that made it difficult. Maybe in this film or just in general, in terms of being a filmmaker, a lot of the the people that both attend our film festival and um, enter films are often young filmmakers. So, any advice or or um, you know, info that you can share with them, I think is is really very helpful. Yeah, um, it's a great question. I think with this film in particular, one of my challenges was that I, I'm working with an elderly community and people were actually passing away as I was trying to get in touch with them and mm -hmm. bring them into the film. Um, and so it was a little bit of a race against time and, um, and sometimes mm -hmm. I filmed with a subject and by the time I, you know, came back around to do a follow-up shoot with them, they were in the hospital or they had passed. Uh, so, um, wow. yeah, it was, it was interesting, um, 
working with these people and realizing that I was like capturing the last moments of some of their lives. And that felt like a kind of heavy thing to hold. And I felt like I really need to do them justice and mm. finish this film and get it out in the world. And I think that in a larger sense, that's one of the hardest things about filmmaking is that um, it is your vision and you have to believe in it and you have to just put all of your effort and energy behind it because um, it's rare to have the whole world supporting you, you know? It's right like on you to follow through with your vision. Um, so I think believing in, believing in what you wanna make is so important and just having the confidence to follow through no matter what sort of feedback you're getting along the way, just like keep going. Yeah, yeah. wow. Yeah, that's great. I think that's great advice for all of us in, in the things that we do, just go confidently forward. Um, one of my favorite parts of these interviews is asking the next question, which is, do you have any funny stories, any things that happen behind the scenes? Because everything always is so polished in the, the final product, but um, it's been interesting to hear people's uh, funny experiences, <laughs> things you can laugh about now, maybe that weren't so funny when they were happening. I don't know. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, well, one of the things that that happened while we were filming the shots of the landscape um, to match the archival photos too, and we were really literally running from location to location trying to get it all done. Um, running through tall grass and there at one point was a rattlesnake that I heard the rattle before I saw it and I was, was like frantically looking around trying to figure out where it was and um, I almost stepped on it and it could have ruined the entire shoot the whole weekend and you know canceled film right there but luckily oh. luckily it didn't <laughs> oh my gosh yeah I never would think about rattlesnakes wow okay yeah, that, that might be the topper of all the stories I've heard. Oh my gosh. Oh, wow. Well, I I was sorry that, you know, obviously you're you're out on the West Coast still. Um, and I was sorry that you couldn't be there for for the the screening and to hear people's reactions to to the film. As I said, it was very moving, I think, for audiences here and um I just wonder, you know, if if the people um, from Dawson have seen the film, if if you've been there for other screenings, like, you know, how does it feel for you to have your work seen and to hear those reactions? What is that like for you as a filmmaker? Yeah, um, it's so gratifying. So sadly, I wasn't able to screen the film in person um, through the pandemic. I have shown nice. at festivals online. Um, mm -hmm. And that's actually been like surprisingly nice because I think it's reached a larger audience than had it only been showing mm -hmm. in person at smaller um, venues. And um, yeah, I've gotten a lot of really nice written feedback from people. And of mm -hmm. course the most like special feedback is from people who used to live there. Um, mm -hmm. They have they have a nice, like, robust Facebook community, and everyone is mm -hmm. in touch with each other online, so they were able to watch it, and yeah, it's just been really nice to hear from them, um, how much it touched them, and how much it brought yeah. back for them. Yeah, well, it, it really does capture their their story in a short period of time. Um, you, you really did a wonderful job, I think, of of telling their story and and preserving that, as you said, their their experiences. So it's, it's wonderful. Um, is there a way for your fans out here in Percival to find out more about other projects that you're working on? Yeah, um, if you want to check out our website, my husband and I work together on documentaries, and our website is pineconepictures.com. So our latest work goes up there. All right, terrific. Well, I'll make sure to add that link um, uh, when we post the information. So thank you, Emily. Thank you for your time and for 
sharing stories with us. Is there anything else that you wanna want to add at this point? Yeah, I just wanna say thank you to you and um, to the film festival. I think it's so cool that Percival is supporting the arts and supporting filmmakers. And yeah, I'm just like proud to have my hometown doing that. So thank you. Yay. Well, hopefully we'll see more from you and um, you know, just stay in touch with us and uh, the best, all the best with uh, all your future projects and stay safe and healthy. Thank you, you as well, I appreciate it.